Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we're going to continue on with the alternatives to cash outs. All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, the office. So today, this is uh, day two of the cash out or alternatives to uh, cashing out and using crypto loans. So we kind of laid the groundwork on the very first video where we talked about, you know, the different uh, four platforms where we could actually get a crypto loan and uh, how it is all collateralized. So today we're going to first talk about some, some basics of things that you can do to actually earn yield. Then we're going to go over just uh, some basics as far as the, the short term rental space, as far as Airbnb and VRBO. And then finally, we're going to take a look at which crypto loans you can use, which ones are the best for it and really how it'll all play out. So uh, let's just jump in. This might be a little bit long, but there's a lot of great information. So just stick with me and, and I'll see you at the end. Okay, welcome back. Let's continue our discussion about using our crypto for collateral and taking a loan to make it work for us. Now, today is all about using crypto loans for an investment property, which you can rent out on Airbnb and also VRBO. Now, this is what I do and it works for me and my wife. But before we start, this is for educational purposes only and it is not financial advice. This is just what I am doing. So, if you haven't yet watched the Fundamentals of Crypto Loans and Four Platforms video, then I'll link it at the very end of this video. Or if you're watching this on Dan Teaches Crypto in the members area, then the video is right above this one, so you cannot miss it. Also, if you want to know why I recommend taking loans versus cashing out and which platform has the best rates and terms, then watch this video. All right. So as a reminder... Uh, you can make passive income on your crypto by simply staking or holding. You can hold them on an interest-bearing platform like uh, Celsius or Voyager, Nexo, Crypto.com. However, I personally only use Celsius and Voyager because I trust them and I earn between 45 to 18% yield. But you're free to get exposure to all the other ones out there. You can find a secure link to each of uh, the platforms I talked about by clicking in the description below this video and you'll get $20, $25 uh, in Bitcoin if you sign up using those links. Okay. Also for staking, I recommend Cardano because you keep your Cardano in your personal wallet where you have control of your own keys. Your ADA is never locked in place, so you can undelegate at any time, and there's no minimum to stake, so you can start staking with just a couple of ADA if you wanted to, which I, I think is pretty great. Uh, lastly, you can add more ADA to your staking wallet or remove ADA at any time, and you can earn between four to six percent rewards with ADA by delegating to a Cardano staking pool. I will humbly recommend our own at D News Pool. You can find everything about it at danteachescrypto.com. Just click on the uh, ADA staking tab right here and then scroll down to this 13-minute uh, video which explains what our pool is, how to stake to it, our rates, and near-perfect uptimes so rewards flow in continuously. And finally, if you don't want to do any of these things but want some massive tax savings, then check out my video titled How I Pay No Taxes on my crypto gains through iTrust and my Roth crypto IRA. If you have a uh, traditional IRA somewhere else or you have an old employer plan like a 401k, a 403b, military TSP, 457, or you want to start up a new crypto IRA or just an IRA, then talk to the guys at iTrust by using the link in the description that looks like this and get 30 days for free. So, Airbnb and VRBO are just great uh, if you use them correctly. There's a lot of ways to fail at it, especially if you have an investment property. And if you don't know what it is, uh, Airbnb is an app that lets people rent out their properties to other people. So let's say you want to go to Houston, go to Houston, Texas. Check-in dates, well, it's December 29th. We'll go there for seven days. And we're going to search... And basically, it just gives you every type of place that's out there. And then you can filter it and you can stay in these places. And they're people's homes. And you can, um, you know, stay either there by the room or by the house. And this is pretty good, if, especially if you're one of those people who like traveling with your family, don't want to stay in a hotel. This is a perfect option and a much cheaper option, actually. And it just depends on, on uh, how big the house is, how nice it is, the amenities and everything else that kind of comes along around with that. 
So we do this with our properties in El Paso and Houston. And it's been a great way to generate uh, revenue while gaining equity in an appreciating asset in a much quicker or more rapid way. So instead of paying off a house off in 30 years, we'll be paying off these properties in about seven. So. So personally, I like owning properties and assets because they generally uh, appreciate and there are also tax benefits. Owning a home allows you to reduce your taxes through depreciation and the interest from your loan every single year. Now I also, now I see property and really land as the ultimate store of value. Hey, I mean, in my opinion, everybody needs a place to stay and uh, this is why I think it's a pretty good store of value. So to use Airbnb and VRBO, you can obviously rent out your place uh, while you're away from vacation or whatever, but a better option is just to buy an investment property and rent it out on a short-term basis. So the question then is, should you just go out and buy any property that you think will get rented quickly based on your gut. No, you don't. Just like everything, you need to do your own research and find the right property in the right area for the right price. So let me introduce you to AirDNA. Let's go through their website and I can explain it in a little bit more detail. So this is AirDNA. And what's great about this website is that it tells you exactly how many rentals are being utilized by Airbnb and VRBO. So you can kind of get a sense of the area that I live in, is this a good place to actually purchase a rental property and put on Airbnb or VRBO? Or is this just a place that has, you know, nothing going on and people don't even want to stay here? So there's a lot of cities out there like that. So when you look for these types of places, of course, I always like to look around me first and then I kind of branch myself out. Now, thankfully, I live in, uh, in Houston and I'm also in El Paso. and There's never a shortage of uh, people who want to stay there because there's always, always transients, people coming in and out. So uh, what I really want to do then is really kind of narrow it down and see what kind of uh, different areas are good or what locations within that city. You can also break this up and, and if you're one of the and people who live in like a city where you're like, I don't know if this would actually work, you can just take a look at the entire city. So real quick, let's take a look at, I'm gonna go for Cypress, Texas. And that's a, a little city uh, outside of Houston. And what's great about this is that, well, first of all, there's two options. You can you can pay for the monthly fee for this one, I think it's like 20 or 30 bucks. I don't ever do that. I just go for the, for the free option because I can kind of look at and kind of see what's going on in this area. So before we move down, there's uh, just a couple of things to make mention that are pretty important on this uh, page. First of all, this market grade. It talks about rental demand, zero to 100. So 85 is pretty darn good. Next part here is the average daily rate. And this is what I look at just to take a look at what kind of houses I can get as far as the price. If I'm looking at $153 uh, average daily rate and the occupancy rate is 61%, so let's say that uh, that's about, what, 18 days or so times 153, you're looking at almost $3,000 per month or $2,754. Now, there are fees and there are you know different things you have to pay for, but that's a pretty good indicator that this is a pretty hot market, a pretty good section of the city to get into it. So those three right there is pretty good. Then here's the average revenue, 1667. These are the types of things. Also, right down here, entire room versus private room. This will play into the hands of the homeowner association and what you can actually do, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But that's a pretty good indicator that yes, people are uh, renting the entire home, which is what we do. Uh, I don't recommend the private rooms. I mean, you can do that. That's one option, but uh, we don't do that. that. It'll tell you like, this is Cypress, Texas. Here's Houston, Jersey Village, all that stuff. And it'll just break it down by like, here's all the different Airbnb properties that are listed on there. And you can actually go to it. Like, let's see over here. Any nice. Ah, this is a nice one. This one's got a high rate. Average daily rate is 424. Nice. So when you pay for it, when you pay, if you pay for the AirDNA thing, you can look at the occupancy and the revenue it makes per month. But I I used to uh, actually purchase that per month. I found it wasn't really super accurate. So I just went away with it. Really, what I really want to see is are there people actually uh, putting these up in Airbnb and what is going on with it. So let's, let's let's take a look at this one. This one looks really nice. So aha, uh -huh. one thing you want to look for is if they are called super hosts. Super hosts for Airbnb, there's certain criteria. One is they can't cancel any of their reservations and two, they have to have a lot of booking. So if you see a lot of uh, uh, super hosts, that's a pretty good sign that there's something uh, positive going on in that area. And you can kind of take a look at what 
people are renting out their homes for in that area. So for this one, it's 420 bucks a night. So if I'm looking at, at uh, to buy houses around this area, I'm like, okay, well, if I do this, I can make 420 per night uh, if I have something as nice as this. Now, if I don't, let me go back real quick. So let's say, let's take a look at this one, Dre's Place. All right, Dre's Place. This is 111 bucks a night. Let's see what the competition would potentially be in this area. So this is just an apartment. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's, there's really nothing to it. Pretty bare bones. I mean, you could go in there and I mean, if you had like a house with a lot more space, you'd be, make a killing in this area. So definitely this is one of those things I'd look at and go, okay, this is not a bad area to invest into as far as uh, Airbnb. Now, what you want to look out for is if people's rates, you start to look at it over, you know, the, the next days, weeks, and months, you start to see like these daily rates just drop and drop and drop. That means that they're not having anybody actually purchase uh, their place. So if you're looking at something like this and you're like, okay, like this one here, I've, been, I've checked this out before. It's always been around 300. Actually, it did fall down in the uh, coronavirus era in March. And it went down to like the, the, the 200s, 220s, but then it shot right back up in a couple of months, just like our place did. So right now uh, they're doing pretty good. And you got other ones over here. I mean, you can just, just take a you know gambit. So what's great about this is to take a look at wherever your area is, make sure that there are people actually renting on there. And then of course you can, uh, if you want to get uh, this rental property, like we're talking about here, you can always just find a real estate agent and go, Hey, I'm looking for something in this area. What can you find me? And then just do the comparables about what's going on. So that is essentially how we uh, look for properties to see if they are a good fit for Airbnb and VRBO. And real quick, I haven't really talked much about VRBO, but VRBO is vacation rental by owner. And we put our houses on both of these platforms on Airbnb and VRBO. And it seems like we, it's, it's, it's the craziest thing. It's the exact same home that we have, but we put, we listen on VRBO for a higher price. And usually people will, will pick it up on VRBO and they have no problems paying the higher price. And we believe what it is, is that with Airbnb, it's more of a younger crowd, younger generation, maybe people maybe not looking so much for a whole home. Maybe they're just looking for a place to stay, like, like a room to rent, which they do have that in Airbnb. But for VRBO, it's a little bit more just the entire homes and vacation rental places. So you have an older crowd, people with a little bit more money, and they're like, yeah, we'll pay for it, especially if it's a nice place. So those are two options to put them both on there, and they work fine. And also, there's a lot more to discover about how to uh, make a short-term rental for Airbnb and VRBO. And these are the two best resources that we looked into uh, when we first started our journey with uh, Airbnb or with, with short-term rentals. And there were two YouTube channels. They're 100% free and they are fantastic. So these two YouTube channels uh, will teach you the basics like setting up a, a guest guidebook, scheduling the, the cleaning crew, setting up your Airbnb account and the right descriptions, pictures and settings, how to deal with legal issues uh, such as damaged or broken items and like, like a ton more. So uh, these two guys, their philosophies are very different. Richard here, uh, as you see right here uh, from Short Term Rental University, he's aligned with me and believes that you should actually own the property that you're renting. And this gentleman over here, Stephen, uh, he believes that you should rent the house from the owner and then sub rent it on Airbnb. Now, I don't, I don't like that method uh, because Stephen here got caught short during the coronavirus when uh, he had a lot of or very few people were traveling and he had to pay the rent for all the homes he was renting because he has over like 150 different places that he rents and then sub rents out. So that is just one option. And again, I don't really like it too much, but he's got a lot of great information as far as like uh, how to take uh, the best pictures and how, you know, the description, thing like that. And then uh, Rich over here is more of a conservative reserve type of person like myself, who's just like, you know what, uh, you know, get the actual property, make sure that you own it because there's great tax advantages. And then it's just a appreciating asset, which I firmly believe in. So I will link those in the description below. So this all sounds great. And I've given you all the resources I use to learn, but here are some of the hard lessons we learned along the way. So consider this like your shortcut section. I call this the Airbnb VRBO issues that most everybody comes across. And the first one is the big one, HOA restrictions. So homeowner association restrictions. So when you're looking for all these homes and all these places to call your own as an investment property, make sure that you talk to the real estate agent and say, what are the restrictions for homeowners associations? Some places have it very strict where they say there is no short-term rentals and they will even mention 
Airbnb and VRBO by name. So if that is the case, you cannot get a short-term rental investment property only long-term rentals and that's your thing sure go for it but uh, just make sure you check with the agent that you're working with as far as buying homes because uh, if you don't you just bought a place and you're pretty much stuck with uh, long term and you cannot get out of it and good luck uh, fighting them on that because uh, you will not win they have a ton of money in lawyers and uh, they will just crush you so don't even go that route and the next part here I call house parties and this is one of the things that we've solved which was I mean you can't 100% solve it but people will rent your place and have a blowout party and destroy everything and then off they go. Now with both of the platforms, they, they get your information, they get your driver's license, they get a credit card. Uh, but of course, if you have a credit card that expires, what are they gonna do? So what we always do is uh, if you live in the town where we have the house and you wanna rent that house, we will not allow you to do that. And that's one of the criteria that we set forth in the settings for Airbnb and VRBO. And again, just watch those uh, those two YouTubers. They'll tell you exactly how to set that up. And uh, if that ever happens, uh, as far as like people say, oh, but you know, I live in Houston. And I just wanna say that because of my sick mom. Nope, sorry, uh, go find someplace else because we've been victim of that and we will not let that happen again. And the last one is the most interesting one. And this is low occupancy. And this kind of hits us from time to time. Now, the first thing, that uh, to look at is your pictures on Airbnb. Did you see how beautiful and professionally done the ones were on the very first home as opposed to that little apartment on, on our second one? That first one was like stellar. So I cannot stress this enough. Pictures make a huge difference. It's just like uh, the thumbnails of my YouTube videos. If I don't make a, a good thumbnail, no one's even gonna check out the video to see if it's good or not, or if it sucks. They're just like, well, it's just a crappy uh, thumbnail. I'm not gonna watch it. So the same thing with the pictures on your Airbnb and VRB profile. Also, if things get real bad as far as occupancy, like another pandemic or a recession, depression, where people are not traveling whatsoever uh, again, uh, just know that people will still need a place to call home. Even in 2008, 2009, with the housing market bubble crash, uh, people couldn't afford their expensive mortgage payments because they overextended themselves, but they still needed a place to live, so they rented lower cost homes or apartments. So you're welcome to purchase a $75,000 home or a million dollar home if you can afford it with your crypto loan, but I generally stay away from expensive mortgages for this exact reason. If you don't make it work on Airbnb, you can always go from short-term rental to long-term rental uh, because people will always need a place to stay and it is an, an appreciating asset and it just builds and of course, uh, all the different uh, advantages of doing it that way. So you really can't lose here. Well, I mean, you can't lose, I, I shouldn't say like that, but uh, just be aware uh, of these three things. Also, continue on with low occupancy, even though uh, Corona or the coronavirus ravaged the US and the hotel and travel industry in general took a huge hit. Um, us as uh, people on Airbnb, we only saw an initial reduction in March and April uh, when people were like scared out of their minds about the virus. But only about uh, three months later, we were practically back to where we were uh, in occupancy. So the reason was is that people still had to travel for work or they needed to be in another city for one reason or another, traveling work or something like that. And a lot of them didn't like to stay in hotels for a variety of reasons. And that's why where Airbnb uh, wins out. So even though there's, there's sometimes a, a slowdown, it will usually pick up back up because people need a place to stay. And again, if it really collapses, then I mean, the worst case scenario is that you, have, you get somebody there in long term and uh, they pay the rent and the mortgage and you have an appreciating asset. Okay, so now we know the basics such as doing our own research as to investment properties for short-term rentals and some things to avoid. So now let's get down to how we can use our digital assets and take out a crypto loan as a purchase. So as we looked at yesterday, the longest loan, ter loan term as of December 2020 is a 36 month, which is brought to you by Celsius. This means that uh, this rate of interest is locked for three years and uh, unfortunately three years only. So what happens after the term is up? Well, legally they can raise it. So I just want you to be aware. Uh, as mortgages, mortgages are typically between 15 and 30 years, what can you do? Well, what I'm doing is I'm taking out a crypto loan for the down payment on the investment property and using a traditional bank to finance the rest over a 15 year 
time frame. So I won't take uh, 15 years to pay off the loan as I will always pay ahead. Just make sure that the loan with the bank has no prepayment penalties. Make sure you ask them about that. To be clear, you can't take out a loan for the down payment. So that's 20% has to come from somewhere. And I don't want to cash out my crypto and pay 30 to 45% in capital gains tax. That's just, uh, just call me crazy. It's just not my thing. So as a point of reference for a homestead or primary residence loan, your down payment is very low at one to three percent and sometimes uh, nothing at all if you qualify. However, we are purchasing a investment property and the down payment in the US is usually 20% down. This might be higher or lower in other countries, but that's what we have here. And the reason for that is that mortgages with lower down payments generally require mortgage insurance and it's next to impossible to find mortgage insurance for investment properties. Also remember what I talked about as far as margin. So if we take out a loan, and all of a sudden the uh, cryptocurrency market goes down, we have to re-collateralize. So, so you must keep in mind that crypto goes in cycles. So whatever you have in crypto as of right now, which is December 2020, will most likely go up in 2020. Not everything is gonna go up in 2021, but for the majority, uh, if we look at cycles, it usually does. And then it'll, it'll retrace in 22 as it had before. So this is what I like to call having all time high dip and then retrace or space. So there was a halving in 2012. You had an all-time high in 2013. You had a huge dip in 2014. This is for Bitcoin going across the board. And then 2015, you had a little bit of a retracement. And then, you, and then the whole process started again. Halving in 2016, all-time high in 2017. In 2018, you had a huge dip down 73%. And in 2019, you had a space. Then in 2020, we had our halving. And that's why we expect 2021 to be a monstrous year and one of the biggest years for a cryptocurrency. So that will be all our all time high. And if history holds true, that means in 2022, we will have a massive dip and in 2023, a retracement. So just make sure that when you're doing these types of loans that you have everything factored in. And what I mean about that, I mean, I would not recommend you take out any loans when things are going parabolic as you'll just have to put more money in when things crash. So in 2017, if you would have uh, rode Bitcoin all the way up to the top around 17, 18,000, go, I'm rich, and just take out loans against that. In 30 days, you would have had, you would have been wrecked because you your margin would have been slashed uh, like crazy. So just keep in mind the time frame that we're talking about here. And that's why I always recommend uh, to pay off your loan as fast as possible. So for the down payment, pay it off as fast as possible, or at least as low as you can as fast as possible. This takes discipline, but it's what I plan to do, and I'm pretty sure that uh, we can all do that if we work towards that goal. And this is what I talk about as far as making the loan work for you, not the other way around, because we're going to use our short-term rentals uh, in Airbnb and VRBO to help us pay off those loans as quickly as possible. So just like we talked about, uh, you can make uh, some, some massive payments to your loan based on how well you rent out your investment property. And that's how we make the loan work for us and not the other way around. So let's take my real world example. What I'm doing is purchasing an investment property in Houston, Texas that cost $167,500. Now, the offer was just accepted last week. Obviously, uh, I home in Los Angeles, California, or parts of New York. Won't get you anything for this price, but in Texas, <laughs> it's a different story, as well as throughout the entire globe. Now, I'm sure in like a place like Costa Rica, I can get a mansion, or so Jerry tells me. Anyhow, 20% of 167500 is $33,500. So we need 33000 for the down payment. Now, I actually sold a little bit of Bitcoin just a bit ago. And I actually sold, uh, to be exact, 0 0.2 Bitcoin or $4,000. And uh, I'll be using those profits to put into my down payment, which means I only need 29,500. So let's look at the four lending platforms to see how that compares and which will be the best fit for this example. So here we are with Celsius and uh, just has the uh, default of $5,000. So let's just kick that up a notch and go to 29,500 and see how much collateral we're going to need. We're gonna need 162 Ethereum if we wanna get the APR of 1%. Well. Maybe we don't have 162 Ethereum. So let's take a look at if we just need a, you know, a 3X instead of a 4X. And we need 122 Ethereum. 
and uh, yeah, just to get 29,500. Let's just, of course, the APR is 3.95, which is still pretty good. I mean, 1% is like outrageously fantastic. Uh, 33%, eh, okay, uh, 4%. And if we're looking at just the collateral to put up uh, essentially double what we need, so instead of having 29,500, we have uh, we the collateral is 81 Ethereum, which is roughly around $58,000 as of today, December 29th, 2020. And the APR is 7.95%, so that is what we're looking for. Now the interest, when paid in cash, I might mind you, is uh, only $1,172, and that's pretty good, but you have to remember, this is only for the loan term of six months. So uh, if we can pay back 29,500 in six months, that'd be great. The chance of that happening just for our rentals, probably not gonna happen. Let's take a look at what it'd be like in 12 months. Well, we're gonna pay 2345. Uh, okay, so that's in a year. Let's say two years, 4690, let's say three years. Now we're looking at $7,000 essentially for the interest to be paid over three years. If we put up 81 Ethereum and have it locked into place and we have or we need 29,500 for the down payment. So if you think about it, these are the worst terms you can get with Celsius. About 8%, 50% loan to value ratio at uh, 36 months. And we're looking at again, uh, $7,000 with interest. Let's take a flip side of that. Let's say that we say, you know what, forget it. We just want to just cash out our Ethereum because we need that down payment. Uh, for our investment property. If we needed that much, we'd need about 40 Ethereum. 40 Ethereum, which right now the, the, the cost is around $720. You're looking at around $28,000, $29,000, somewhere around there. So 40 Ethereum is what it would cost. If you did that and had to pay capital gains tax, you're looking at around 40, 45%, depending on what state you live in. And, and that would be, let's just say half. Half is a pretty good number. Pretty easy to remember. So half of twenty-eight thousand is fourteen thousand. So, in reality, if you get the worst rate here, you are still ahead just by doing uh, with the the crypto loan. And what is also fantastic about this is when you pay it off in three years, how much do you think your Ethereum is going to be worth in three years, uh, as opposed to if you cash it out and then you still have to pay more then that's the big problem and i think that's where the real beauty of this of this all lies is that uh after two years three years four years five years whatever you can get a loan for who knows what it's gonna be like in the future is that you still will get your original 81 ethereum back here and maybe uh if you believe what i believe that uh, ethereum is gonna be worth ten thousand dollars uh maybe you're gonna get back eight hundred and ten thousand dollars worth of ethereum just a thought just something to take a look at so remember, that's pretty much the best right there because if we're looking at uh, loan to value, if we do 33%, which is a, which is a 3x or 2x, uh, you know, APR ranges between 1%, 4%, and at the maximum 8%. So let's take a look at the other three and see what we got on that end. So the next one is Nexo, and it starts out pretty good. It's been around for a while, and it uh, actually has insurance for uh, what you borrow. And it starts out at 5.9%. So let's break that down APR and see how we can do this. So uh, we're gonna go to the borrowing section. So the credit amount, so let's say that we need, like I talked about, 29,500. And an Ethereum, again, roughly about 78. So roughly about double. So you got a 2X, what you need in collateral. All right, so the next question is, well, what is the APR, or what's the interest rate, and how is that figured out? Well, uh, with Nexo, it really comes down to uh, how much Nexo you have in your portfolio. So uh, to get a, the, the premium 5.9 percent you're going to need at least 10 percent nexo in your portfolio so if you are requesting 29500 you're going to need 78 ethereum plus you're going to need 10 percent uh, of that uh, amount or of 10 percent of 60,000 so six thousand uh, dollars worth of nexo so sure uh, the next tier is uh, if you have only five or to ten percent 8.9 one to five is 11, and then the base is 12%. So that is how Nexo does it. And also uh, the Nexo terms only goes up to one year. Only Celsius really has uh, 36 months uh, as the longest. Uh, Nexo, BlockFi, and uh, Crypto.com are all the same. Speaking of which, let's take a look at BlockFi. So uh, BlockFi, again, has been around for a little bit, and uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, the borrow and hold. So we click on that, <clears throat> and let's enter the loan amount again. We're going to need 29,500. So in Bitcoin, you need 2.51. Uh, 
Uh, let's take a look on that ether. So ether, you need a little bit more actually, 9.8, 98 ether. So that would be about two and a half X, somewhere around there, because right now Ethereum is around $720. Okay, so let's get our rate and see how that is calculated. So all right, so it takes you to this uh, section right here, 29,500 in Ethereum. Actually, it raised it up, the collateral amount is 116. So that's almost three X. Uh, this is the uh, monthly payment. I think that is only for uh, the interest. And loan to value is gonna be 35%. I can't change that. And the interest rate is around 7.9%. So uh, that is what you're getting with BlockFi. Essentially, it's pretty much in stone. And we did a, another video where we take a look at the parameters and just didn't look so great. So that is BlockFi. And our last one is Crypto.com. And this one's pretty simple. Uh, they do it very easily. They say, look, if you want, let's say 30,000, um, actually, excuse me, if you deposit around 60, then you can get around 29,500. And here's your rates. It's either 8% or 12%. The only way that that, that works out is if you buy the uh, crypto.com token and you have 25,000 or more, you will get the 8% rate. If you have less, you're going to get 12%. So again, right now, uh, the crypto.com coin is like a nickel. So that's like uh, 1200 bucks somewhere around there. So if you have that state, then they'll give you the 8% and you only need double, but it's still 8% it's still eight percent uh, interest rate. So in this situation, in all honesty, uh, really it's gonna be Celsius. This probably has uh, the best rates depending on uh, the collateral that, that you can get. And remember, funds that you get for this down payment can from be from a variety of sources. It can be from, uh, from your bank account, plus any kind of crypto that you do sell, plus a crypto loan. All put together and here's your option the big thing is is not to uh, sell your crypto if at all possible because uh, in another year two years ten years it could be worth a lot more so go ahead and uh, this is what I would be do I will be doing for the property in Houston and that is how it is now one thing to note is that when you take a loan you no longer accrue interest so if I want to put up 122 Ethereum which I do not have uh, I will not be accruing interest on the Celsius network, and that's pretty much how it is across the board. So how that breaks down is if you're getting 5% interest on Bitcoin and you have one Bitcoin in Celsius, that's that's $1,400 per year or about 116 bucks a month. Uh, but just to note that if Bitcoin goes to 100000 then at 5% yield, uh, you're earning $5,000 per year or $416 per month, so just be aware. So in my opinion, this is what I'm doing. I'm breaking everything up. I personally won't be taking out uh, all my crypto on loans. That would be crazy, but I will diversify. I will leave some in these interest-bearing accounts. I will be cashing out a little bit here and there and putting into other uh, endeavors. I will be taking out crypto loans and spreading it all about so I don't have to actually sell all my crypto. And uh, I just feel like a little diversification uh, really could go a long way. And uh, it's why I try to get multiple streams of revenue to kind of mitigate the future risk. All right, so that is it. Let's jump out of here and into the office and wrap this up. So I hope that made sense. Uh, look. Short-term rentals, property, it's, it's not for everybody. It's, it's complex and there's a lot of moving parts to it. But remember, it is a appreciating asset and it's something that you can leave your kids and your grandkids. And as far as you know, short-term rentals, I think it's the way to go. Just make sure you don't fall into those pitfalls that we talked about in the very beginning uh, for like the, the homeowners association type of issues that comes up, uh, low occupancy and the other things that we talked about. And of course, now for the crypto loans, just go that far. So uh, tomorrow we'll take a look at a different section. We're gonna talk about Amazon FBA, which I think is probably a little bit more correlated to uh, crypto loans, but again, only time will tell. I like to diversify what I do uh, and just not have all eggs in one basket. So hope you liked that video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and uh, we'll see you on the next one.